Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God is your brother, DJ Sam Rock, right here on the Blaze Baba Study. Remember, we really go on every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm glad you're here. Um, I've been rocked today by, you know, my spirit. Uh, my soul was touched today because I literally went to a funeral for uh, one of my favorite evangelists, which was a close friend and mentor of mine personally. And he went to be with the Lord uh, last Friday, I believe it was. And man, it just rocked me, man. It was uh, something that was so touching, beautiful, heartfelt. Uh, I didn't know whether to cry or whether to be happy. Because see, as Christians, we believe that we don't really die. We just exchange addresses. We change addresses. So when we hear... You know, this is a tent, a body that decays here on this side of eternity. And on the other side of eternity, um, we are still alive, even more alive than what we are now. That's what a Christian believes, because we believe in eternal life through the saving work and power and love and grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So welcome to The Blaze. If this is your first time, The Blaze Bible Study is like this. It's me, your brother Sam. Sometimes I'm going to have guests on here very soon. And I give you 25 to 30 minutes of a Bible reflection, a Bible study. Um, you know, I get into the Word. God shows up in His Word because you know the Bible is the only book you can pick up and read that the author is present every time you read it. There's no other book like it. Because the Bible says for itself that the Bible, the Word of God, is alive, active, sharpened at any double edged sword, able to pierce the bone marrow, you know, between the soul and the spirit. That's how powerful the word is. That's why people yield the word of God and it could really tear down somebody or it could really bring somebody up. So the Bible and the word of God is in the wrong hands, could be sort of dangerous. God has everything under control. He's not going to let nobody take his word and, you know, wipe out nations. Although people say, you know, we accuse of the God of the genocide, um, you know, how he wiped out all a nation and people don't realize that he wiped out um, the nations because some of the nations because they were 300 years burning babies and giving a babies the babies over to a god that they were in a hot furnace and they would put the babies in there and 300 years because God is patient he's loving he's kind he's slow to anger but that's I don't want to get on track off track so I want to give you this the funeral of an evangelist and it was so kind of strange to me because I'm like, what do we do here? We celebrate, do we cry, do we grieve? And I think all of that happens because, oh, I'll get to that after we pray because a brother that was there that I know in the Lord brought up a good point about why we feel certain ways at funerals as believers, as believers. You're not a, if you're not a Christian, hold tight, listen, because this is for you too. You could be an atheist, agnostic, skeptic, cynic, um, from another worldview, another religion, background. Um, maybe you're just seeking and you don't really know what's true yet. You don't know what, what's really happening right now in your life. Um, I'm here by way of the Holy Spirit God to help you out and help myself out um, during this grieving process as, um, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if to celebrate because uh, my brother's with the Lord or because we're going to miss him here on this side of eternity. And we did groundwork together. We did footwork together. We did evangelism together. We witnessed together on the streets of New York, Bethlehem, Easton, uh, New Jersey, um, you name it. We were there and we did this hands-on um, evangelistic ministry witnessing. On the um, name of his ministry was Rescue the Lost Ministry, um, Love for the Lost Ministry. Um, and it was men that... When you combine the three men that were head of that ministry, right, you have over 50-something years of experience as God-fearing men, Christians, Christ followers, apologetics, and evangelists. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person that's going to come and see this live. I pray, Lord God, supernatural hedge of protection over them physically, emotionally, spiritually, Lord God, that you will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus who strengthens us and gives us the ability to Declare victory because we know that with you all things are possible, and we also know without you nothing is possible. So I pray hedge protection, I pray financial breakthrough, I pray health, healing, wholeness in the name of Jesus. And for everyone who comes on this, I pray, Lord God, that you would speak 
to them directly. I might be saying one thing, Lord, but that you would speak to their hearts and minds something that they need today, complete and whole, and that that still small voice that they will hear and they will not be distracted as we go forth in your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So God bless you. I'm Brother DJ Sam Rock Sam, Brother Sam, uh, here on the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can find what my network does at www.songwinnerswithaz.org. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking about the, the funeral of an evangelist. You know, I named it that way because I literally was at a funeral earlier today. And from what I observed, I was like, wow, this is this is something else. Amen. What's up, Jim McKenzie? God bless you. So it was something else. Like, I didn't know how to be, you know, like, should I, like I said, should I cry? Should I get up and be happy? Well, it was time for people to come up to the front and give a couple of words on behalf of my brother in Christ that went to be with Christ, Ray Valentin um, Sr. Amen. And uh, man of God, um, not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But man of God, he was. Um, that's why I read my tagline on my Facebook, Sam Lopez, Soul Winners. Um, you'll see that my description of myself is simply man of God. Any questions? I got that from him because he was like, I'm just a man of God. Have any questions? And he brought me in, into the realm of apologetics. And apologetics is uh, contending for the faith or defending the faith. Don't We don't have to defend God. Obviously, God created us, so we don't have to uh, defend God. Amen. God bless you, Joanna. Joanne Torres. Amen. God bless you too, Jill. Amen. So we have some people here on the live. And um, we don't have to defend God. Amen. So we have to just believe in his word and do what his word says. Amen. God bless you, Alicia. God bless you. And um, just his word. So let's talk a little bit about apologetics first before we get into um, deeper into what I was going to say. Apologetics, um, we have to be careful with apologetics. I'm going to tell you why. Because we're not called to win arguments. We're supposed to break and cast down those arguments. But we're supposed to do it in love. Now, if I can argue you argue into the faith, like, win you into the faith through an argument, to trust Jesus Christ, I think, well, I know, I'm not going to beat around the bush, I know that's a false conversion. Earlier in my walk, I was going about witnessing to everybody I saw, especially the youth and young adults, teenagers, young adults. And when I used to see a young person, like 13, 14, 15, um, getting approached by maybe a Mormon, uh, a black Israelite, a uh, a Jehovah Witness, all these people that I was like, I don't think they're telling them the truth. I would jump on my car. I would approach and tell them to go away because those people were liars. That's the way I am. And that's the way I was. And I still am like that way because I'm feeling a certain way when people want to push their religion, push their belief on somebody. And then here I come, you know, a kind hearted man and I get cursed out and being told that I'm the hater where literally they're hating because they're lying. If you love somebody, you tell them the truth. If you hate somebody, you lie to them because you won't care. But anyway, I will get out because I know there's four things that we all ask ourselves in life, four things. And I learned this from Rabbi Zacharias from RZIM International Ministries, that these four questions that we all deal with, we deal with origin, right? We deal with meaning, we deal with uh, morality, and we deal with destiny. Mor uh, or origin is where did I come from? The Bible says that we are created by the dust of the earth, and Elohim breathed life into man. So he created us from the dirt and breathed life into us. So we are spirit, right? We have a spirit. We are spirit. And yeah, you're the same way too, right? You'll go up and preach to anybody, right, Alicia? Amen. So we go and we do these things. And then, so you, where do we come from? Well, as believers, we believe that we come from God, that God created us formless and fashioned from the dirt of the earth, red dirt, and blew into us. And we became 
alive. Now, what does that mean? You know, there's a big debate going on right now on the college campuses today. In these, in these times, it's strange to me. And the question or the debate is, or, you know, the philosophers are getting together and trying to understand or trying to uh, explain. Check this out. And if you don't believe me, you can look it up. This is the big question on the campuses. What does it mean to be a human? Are you like I'm in my late 40s when I was a kid, I knew I was a human being. And even when I was a kid before I knew Jesus, you couldn't come up to me with this, the ape thing. Like I used to be a, a monkey, an ape first and all this other stuff. And then I evolved into man. You couldn't tell me that. I mean, I'm dark skin and everything, but I, I don't have no monkeys in my genes. Amen. So I don't know about that. But. I am saying that you couldn't get me to believe in that evolution stuff, even before Christ, because it didn't make any sense. I knew I was a human, and I hope you know you're a human too. I mean, you're breathing, um, whether you're a multimillionaire, you know, or you're, you know, struggling in your finances. Guess what? We're equal, because when we go to the hospital and we're suffering or dying or we have an illness, you know what they would do to the multimillionaire? Check for, and you know what they'll check for the person who doesn't have a lot? They check for the vital signs. The same vital signs that they need me to have that are functioning is the same thing a multimillionaire's vitals need to have to see if their vitals are functioning. So that evens out the playing field. So origin, we come from God. Meaning, what does that mean? It means that we have intrinsic worth, we have value, if God, with his own hands, created us from the dirt of the earth, brave, you know, breathed life into us, breathed life into us, then he must have some value for us, right? He, he's telling us that we mean something. We have a purpose on this planet. Amen? We're not just um, cosmic stardust that just so happened to, you know, come together out of a big explosion billions of years ago. And then somehow, some way, we got our intellect, we, our brains were formed, our eyes were formed, our mouths were formed, our, our organs were formed, uh, the DNA strands were all put together because of an explosion. I don't have enough faith to believe in that. I have faith to believe that God created us, and that means that I have value and you have value. Morality. This is another big issue that's going on in our culture today. Morality. Like, that's your truth, Sam. And, and what, who says you're right and I'm wrong? Well, uh, I don't say if I'm right or wrong. Someone outside of me says whether I'm right or wrong. Because if I could write myself, I would have. If I could wrong myself, well, I do that. Everybody wrongs themselves. But if I could make things right mor morality-wise in my life, why wouldn't I? People go around saying, well, that's your truth. All truth is relative. You know, some people think this is true. And just because you don't believe it's true doesn't mean it makes it you know, not true. And yeah, relativism, all that stuff. It means that everybody is right. Well, in common sense, <laughs> we all know, if you be honest, not everybody could be right. We all be wrong, but somebody has to be right and somebody has to be wrong. Morality comes from someone outside of us if it just came from me who 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 would make things right i could go up to somebody right now take their wallet out of their pocket and hey that's my wallet and i'll be like well so i'm taking it you can't take my wallet why not if everything is relative you know i don't believe that taking your wallet is wrong so why am i wrong because i took your wallet yeah you took my wallet that's wrong well how do you know something is wrong if there's nothing out, something outside of us that's telling us we're wrong, or are you just is that just your opinion? Because if it's just your opinion, your opinion said that's wrong. My opinion says I'm right. So morality is a big issue in our culture right now. You know, Christians are being targeted to be being called the haters. So I don't know how long before uh, I could do these streams before people get on this stream and be like you're a hater, you hate this and you hate that, and then when you as believers, when you go through the videos, you be like, Sam never said that. Like, why are they saying that? Because it's a big topic right now. Morality. You can't go up to anybody and tell them they're wrong anymore. As a matter of fact, I do online marketing during the week, right? 
and now the forms I fill out to be an affiliate for a company or a business or a product. On the forms now, they're changing the forms, you know, and the gender. So it'll go, you know, give me your name, your address, telephone number, uh, and gender. And when it gets to the gender part, a lot of forms are saying now, and this is no joke, it says, what do you uh, consider yourself or what do you most consider yourself, male or female? What? Like, it's not saying male or female no more. Like, they're changing it. So the, when it comes to the gender, it says... What do you um, relate most to? There's another word. I'm using the wrong word, but you get what I'm saying. And you say mostly male, uh, male, mostly woman, or woman. That's what we're facing. And the morality issue of the culture says, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm saying, uh, what planet are we in? Like, what happened since when, like... The image that you're seeing on the screen, um, I would say 99.9% of you will realize that I'm a, a man, a male, right? Uh, I know there's operations you could get, and if you're a woman, you can make yourself look like a man. If you're a man, you can make yourself look like a woman. But guess what? Our DNA and genes will prove the fact of who we are and what we are male or female so that's a big thing going on so what did I say let's recap four things you got to ask yourself is origin everybody it doesn't matter you're Christian atheist agnostic cynic skeptic another worldview four questions always come up in your life origin meaning morality and destiny now let's go to destiny what happens and this is where in apologetics this is where people jump all over there. They wait They wait like this with their arms crossed. Okay, we know what, what they're going to ask now. What happens when you die, after you die? You know, that's the big issue. A lot of people say, ah, we got you now. You're just putting this God of the gaps thing in because you don't, you don't know and nobody knows what happens after you die. So what you did was as Christians, as religious people they call us, you put that in there and you said that there's a heaven and there's an afterlife. We said it. Uh, no, I didn't say it. No one in history has said it except for the Lord Jesus Christ. God in the scriptures had explained where you go after this side of eternity. Not the Christians. Like, since when did Christians um, have the last say of Christianity? As a matter of fact, we were called Christians in the first century church. The people like, there goes those people that were with Jesus Christ. They are Christians. We didn't go around saying we were Christians. So when it comes to that issue, God said it. He said it. And then from there, you know, we need to go in. Jesus needs to come quickly. Only God can save us. You're right, Jill. You're totally right. But listen, I know it's going to sound weird, but I hope Jesus tarries. I hope he takes a little longer. There's people in my family that I want to make sure are saved. Even though I can't change nobody's heart, change somebody's life, I, I, I need, I, I really need them to be saved. Because if you really love somebody, and if all of this is true, which I believe is true, and let me just say something. Just because I believe something is true doesn't make it true. Okay? So I admit that too. There's some things in the scriptures that I, I can't understand unless the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit God shows me and teaches me and gives me revelation on. So we're all on even ground there. But I hope Jesus tarries. I hope he doesn't come today or tomorrow. I, I, I'm praying for family members. I'm praying for people in my family that, l listen, I, if this is true, right? If Christianity is true, we know the bad news of a person who goes on, who dies, and doesn't have Jesus in their life, in their heart, and never surrendered their life to the Lord. It's bad news. And that bad news is... It's like literally haunting me, man, every day, you know, until uh, until my last breath, I'm going to be praying for my family. There's no way that, you know, I could live just like carefree, knowing that there's people in my family that don't know Jesus. And if you're a Christian, you should feel the same burden I'm feeling. It's not it's like if this is true and I believe it is that when someone dies and goes to see the creator of heaven and earth, 
man, woman, boy, girl, everything we see, everything we don't see. And those horrible words that the scripture says that's going to happen to that person when Jesus says, be gone from me, I did not know you. That's serious business. And I hope that doesn't work. Amen. All we can do is pray and spread the truth. Sister, I'm trying all different ways of how to spread the truth. Uh, I'm really um, asking God to give me different ways of doing it. Same truth. No gimmicks. You know me. Jill, Jill's been following me for a long time. You know there's no gimmicks in what I say or what I do. This is a true story in my life. And only God could do it. Amen. Their names he's chosen before they were born in the book of life. Amen. But also, uh, I'm praying the same thing um, that Moses did to the people of Israel when God the Father said, look, I'm going to wipe them out. And then Moses reminds God, Jehovah, you know, Yahweh, of his promise to the Israelites. <laughs> and then because of those promises, God says, well, okay, give them a little bit more time. But, you know, they were really out of pocket. I have family members that are out of pocket. I was out of pocket. And sometimes I still still get out of pocket. And if it wasn't for God's grace and his mercy, where would I be, right? Where would I be? So those are the four things. Origin, meaning, morality, destiny. Amen. And those are the four questions that I believe totally is answered in the New Testament. Jesus answered that on the cross. And also, all through the scriptures, you see that line of redemption. You know, we were, bo- we were put in a Garden of Eden, perfect environment, perfect situation. And then we were deceived. And then we lost some rights into the kingdom, the, that eternal kingdom in the beginning. So we're tossed out. So, you know, kingdom lost. And then Jesus shows up, shows more redemption, right? Repent first. Then you get redeemed. And then we have the kingdom gained again because the kingdom of God is eternal amen so Jill says heaven's real I died once in a car accident and saw heaven God said go back not your time spread the word there you go I didn't say it this sister said it you know saying she saw what she saw and if God says something to her and she says that well I ain't gonna argue you respect that what am I gonna gonna say oh no sister that can't happen God could do anything and he could show himself to anyone and he could save and rescue anyone and he could redeem anyone. God bless you, Brother Tyrese, my brother Reese. Um, Reese is on fire, man. He he challenges believers. He really loves, man. A lot of people think he's going around angry and mad. That brother's not angry and mad. I know that brother personally. That brother just knows the word and wants people to, to realize like how serious this is and not have this cookie cutter Christianity and not to, you know, you know, we don't agree on everything. I'm not saying that, but we do agree on this, that Jesus saves and he's Lord and Savior. And he is the only one that can redeem this nation, save us. Amen. And we're fighting for our families, me and and the brother Reese, man, we're fighting. Amen. Alicia, God bless you. And then Alpha Omega becoming um, and the end, the beginning and the end. That's right. That's Alpha and Omega beginning and the end. Let me get to the scripture because I always fear that if I don't put a scripture in here, you're going to be like, he babbled for a half hour. He didn't bring one scripture in. Amen. I died in a car accident and God brought me back. Wow. See, another one, another one, another testimony. You know what I'm saying? Take it up with them. You don't believe it? Take it up with them. You saw their names across the screen. Amen. I believe it. Why not? God could do anything. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. This is the New International Version. I'm going, to, I'm going to read different versions right here off my iPhone. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. In your heart, revere Christ as Lord. Always, man, I'm having a bad day. Always, you know, there's no money in my bank account. Always, I just have an argument with my wife. Always, ah, I don't like what the pastor said. Always, the Bible said, no matter. Those are all excuses. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. We have hope. I went to a funeral today. I saw a lot of hope in that place. And as a matter of fact, um, the brother's son got up and challenged his family, witnessed to his family and everybody that was in there to get Christ in their hearts and minds. 
He said if he would have not preached the gospel, his dad would have been, he could see his dad at the heavens gate saying, let me out of here because my son didn't preach the gospel. And he brought the gospel at a funeral today that I was at. That's how serious it is. People are, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Are you really good? I could test that real quick. Are you a good person? Somebody would say, yeah. I would be like, have you ever told a lie? And if you're not li- I'm li- lying at the time, you say, yeah, I told a lie. Have you ever stolen anything, even like a pencil or a sharpener? Yes. Have you ever committed adultery? Um, that means that you looked at somebody with lust in your, in your eyes? Yes. You know, like, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. So after all those, we broke four out of the Ten Commandments. Do you still think you're a good person? And if the person is honest, they would say, wait a minute. I never thought of it that way. Because you see, God didn't come to save your spirit. He came to save your soul. So we talk to the soul when we ask those type of questions. That's apologetics. New Living Translation says, 1 Peter 3.15, Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. Nothing else to worship other than Christ in your life. I hope, right, you're not worshiping a person, your bank account, your ministry, your school. You're not worshiping your pastor. You're not worshiping an evangelist, you're not worshiping your money, you're not worshiping a family member, you're not worshiping pornography, right? None of that. The Bible says, instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. You don't have to, listen, Holy Spirit God in you, you don't have to know a million scriptures, thousand scriptures, be nice, but you don't have to quote a lot of scriptures. Sometimes you just share your story. Those two ladies that flashed their, I flashed their comments on the screen. They said they were both saved from car accidents and God brought them back. That's their story. They're going to stick to it. You can argue to your blue in the face. That's their story and they're sticking to it. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not playing games with God as, as if we can play games with God. But you know what I'm saying? The English Standard Version says, But in your hearts, honor Christ as Lord. I like that. Honor Christ as Lord, right? And give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that you have. But respond, listen, with gentleness and respect. All of this, ah, you wrong, and this, that, and the third. Uh, you look like the world when you do that. And where's the spirit of God there? And what type of peace is God going to give to the other person? You yell at me, I'm going to get a little defensive, right? You're going to be like, whoa, whoa, I just asked you a question. you yelling and screaming. Hence the Israelites, every time we get into a discussion, they want to yell and scream because they want more attention. And you know you know what? I've dealt with the Israelites. And I was with a brother in the Lord one time and we went, we went to their, I don't know what you call it, their church or whatever. And we was in front of there and we were getting it in. And because they were louder than me, my boy, my brother in the Lord said, oh, they won the argument. I said, really? Why? Oh, they were there, man. They were loud, man. They were more confident. Just because you're loud doesn't make you the more or more aggressive doesn't make you right. And what you're saying doesn't show that there's more power in you because you're yelling and screaming. I try to yell and scream when I preach sometimes, but it doesn't doesn't work. God didn't give me that type of anointing or that type of style or flow. He wants me to simply talk to you so you can understand clearly what I am saying. Other people are anointed to raise their voice and empower and glory. My pastors do that all the time. They are allowed, God frees their voice out to amplify and they speak truth and they have anointing and they have power. God shows up. You know, if I try to mimic somebody else's anointing and if you try to mimic somebody's anointing, look, be the best you that God created you to be. And then you will see the power of God in your life going out to the masses, going out to the people. And remember, it's all for those who would listen. Some people just be like, I don't want to hear it. And I respect that, too. You don't want to hear it. Um, You know, you're going to hear it if you're my family member. But if you don't want to hear it and you're like, just don't want to hear me. Praise the Lord anyway, because either this side of eternity or the other side of eternity, The Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So if you're anything like me, I'm going to be like, whoa, uh, I'm going to do it now on this side. I'm not going to wait till the other side and then take a risk or be made to bow my knee. Because Jesus Christ, God, 
the Father, God the Son, God Holy Spirit. He's not going to force us to do anything. But the word does say, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And one more version. The New American Standard Bible says, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. That means set Jesus apart in your heart because you're going to need him. And, and, you know, in your heart, always being ready to make a defense, apologetics, to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Let's respect one another. Because I said earlier that if, God bless you, Joey, that if we're Christ followers, why are we going around angry all the time or like we got a chip on our shoulder? If Christ is in us, the hope of glory, you know that Jesus Christ, you know, was respectful. He was um, humble. He just was an example that we should look at and follow. I can't believe we ran out of time already. Look, man, this is your brother, Sam Rock, DJ, brother, evangelist. Um, Just don't call me anything outside of my name and don't call me late for dinner. Just know that I love you and I always will uh, be doing these studies until the Lord takes me home. And in honor of my brother, my friend, my mentor, my fellow partner in in Christ, right? Brother in Christ, Ray Valentin Sr., I just want to let you know that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, um, you could get to know him right now. And during this time that we have, all you have to do is admit a couple of things. Admit that you're a sinner. In other words, that you missed the mark and you sinned against a holy God. And once you do that, believe in your heart. Believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, right, died on the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day. And the Bible says you will be saved. And when you do that, you'll start confessing Jesus Christ as Lord out of your mouth. Because the challenge is right now, you can't say Jesus Christ is Lord if you're not saved. You know that, right? The Bible says only those who have the Spirit of God can say Jesus Christ is Lord. Try it if you're not a believer. Be careful. Don't do it if you're not a believer because God will not be mocked. So you can't go around and say, oh, Jesus is Lord. And you know for sure that Jesus is not in your heart. Amen. That was Romans chapter 10, 9 that I paraphrased. You're right, Joey. Amen. So God bless you all. I got to go. I got to run. We got, you know, worship practice in a little bit, but I just want to get on here. Remember to check out the podcast, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at soulwinnerswithaz.org. And it's the Blaze Bible Study, your brother DJ Sandrock. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always, what? That God is good. Peace.